Okay, let's uh, move to traditional genetic evaluation using the pedigree and phenotype. This is just a review. I am sure uh, everybody is uh, somewhat familiar with that topic. Uh, this just to reminder and then transition to genomic blood to see the differences. So we use linear mixed models um, to estimate uh, reading values of individuals. And uh, we use phenotype and uh, pedigrees. So in the mixed model, uh, we have vector of observations. We have X and Z uh, incidence matrices. Uh, X is associated with the fixed factor B, and Z is the incidence matrix for the random effects. And then we have an error term. So the major assumptions of the linear mixed models uh, are uh, expectations of the random uh, effects and residuals equals to zero. And we assume random effects and residuals are independent of each other. And the variance of the random effects is the G matrix, which is the product of the uh, additive genetic relationship matrix and the added genetic variance. And then we assume that uh, residuals have identity matrix, which is R matrix. You know, every individual has the same error variance, although those assumptions um, may change depending on the experimental design, especially for plant breeding. And, you know, to sum up, the variance of the observation uh, is the product of the uh, Z, G, and Z prime plus residual variance. So, and then we use mixed model uh, equations to solve and to get the predictions for individuals. So the solutions for the fixed effects would be vector V, and then solutions for the random effects would be uh, mu hat. So uh, lambda is a, a ratio of uh, residual variance and added genetic variance, which is uh, basically the uh, inverse of the heritability. So Mendelian segregation effect, you know, when you don't have any phenotypic data for some individuals, what you get is meet parent breeding value. They will be exactly the same for all the SIPs coming from across, because there is no data about those individuals. Which means, you know, we cannot calculate Mendelian segregation effect. So what is the Mendelian segregation effect? Uh, when gametes are produced by meiosis, allele pairs separate, leaving each cell with a single allele. So sampling of parental alleles is random at each locus during the meiosis, and this is called Mendel's law of segregation. So each progeny receives about 50% of the parental DNA, um, and that 50% of DNA is randomly sampled. That's why, you know, seeds do not look alike. So estimation of Mendelian sampling effect requires pro, uh, progeny phenotype. Or we can use markers to provide such information on which allele at a, lo at a QTL was transmitted. So if we model the, the breeding value of an individual, uh, it would be uh, basically um, the summation of the meat parent breeding values plus the Mendelian segregation effect plus an error term. So in the equation, uh, mu sub j and mu sub k are the parental uh, breeding values. Uh, their average would be contribution to the individual breeding value. So it's large contribution. Uh, genomic blob. So 
as we will see, genomic plot is relatively easy and really does not involve anything that we are not familiar with a plot. It's very easy to implement. All we need to do is, you know, replace the inverse of the A matrix derived from the pedigrees with the inverse of the G matrix derived from the markers to predict the breeding values. That's all. So, this is a mixed model equation, a linear model uh, for the genomic plot. Nothing is different, right? It's the same linear mixed model. Uh, one difference is that the Z in the model is the incidence matrix for marker effects. Um, and the U is the vector of editing genetic effects that correspond to allelic substitution effects for each marker. So for each marker, we get a, a coefficient. And that coefficient represents the allelic substitution effect. And then we take the sum of all those coefficients across all the marker loci, and then uh, calculate the breeding values. So if I really simplify the genomic estimated breeding value for an individual, it's really a summation of all the marker effects in the model. Uh, mixed, mixed model equations for the genomic plot, they are exactly the same, except lambda is different. And then we substitute A matrix inverse of the A with the inverse of the G, which is shown in red fonts. So lambda is um, different. Uh, it's defined as the sum across all the loci of the minor allele frequencies times the ratio of error and additive genetic variance. That's the same thing, you know, that ratio I'm talking about, inverse of the heritability. So, of course, uh, in genomic plot, you know, some of the individuals may not have any phenotypic data. That's the idea. You know, we only have market information. We don't have any phenotypic data. And we want to estimate the predictions or breeding values using the markers. And we, you know, accuracy of the genomic estimate breeding values will be different from accuracy of the breeding values of the individuals with some phenotypic data. So the first formula at the top, this is the accuracy of the gen uh, accuracy of the breeding values for individuals with observation. So it's a product of the uh, genetic matrix and error matrix and the variance components. For individuals without any observations, uh, we uh, substitute G with the C matrix, uh, which represent genomic covariance matrix between individuals with and without observations. And C is obtained as the as weighting the ZZ prime with minor allele frequency as shown in the corner, right corner. So uh, fitting uh, genomic plot, uh, once we obtain a G inverse matrix or inverse of the genomic relationship matrix, we can run the mixed model in any platform, in R or in SES or in ASRAML. Uh, this is uh, a, you know, a model, a syntax for ASRAML, for standalone ASRAML. I think we have enough time for another demo, right, Sean? Can you confirm? Can you hear me, Fikrit? Yes. 
Um, yeah, we have a few more minutes, so you can, and still time for questions, so you can do another demo. Okay. Okay, this is you know uh, air sample code. Um, this is the data we have, uh, the fields in the data, the tree effect, and then female and male of the each tree we have, and they are associated with the pedigree. That's why we have P qualifier, and then we have other fields we are not interested in, and then we have uh, the dependent variable height and volume. So what is important here is that, you know, we need to have the pedigree file. This is our pedigree file here. And then we need to have the uh, inverse of the genomic relation matrix, G inverse. And then we need to list the data file. So we must have that order in order for program to run the genomic lab. So I have two parts in the code. The first part is in you know, a classical uh, blob using the pedigree and phenotypic data. And then here we have tree effect, which is the random effect. And that tree effect is associated with, with the inverse of the additive genetic relationship matrix. So we are using pedigree here or inverse of the A matrix. Uh, this is error variance. It is fixed. And this is the additive genetic variance. Again, it is fixed because this is such a small data. I don't want to calculate variance components. I'm just fixing the variance components. And then at the bottom, we have genomic blob. The only difference is you know, substituting A inverse with the G inverse. That's all. Same model. So all I need to do, the program is going to run part one and part two um, consequently and then rename the output for each part. That's what it does. Rename. So part one, A blob, part two is a uh, G blob and all I need to do run it. So this shows the, you know, um, scatter plot of the residuals from the A blob. And then this shows the scatter of the scatter plot of the residuals from the genomic blob. So we have two different estimations. And we can use that data. We can use the different predictions and look at the correlations and look at the accuracy values and then you know go from there so we we have demo already so i have three more slides and then maybe we can you know um have questions and answer session, okay? So uh, this shows um, accuracy of predictions from uh, genomic blob uh, and then and uh, with the predictions from uh, traditional genetic evaluation or A blob, we call it. So you know, you know, here in that paper published by Zapata Valenzuela, they split the population into training and validation uh, to different scenarios. And then they look at the uh, correlations between predictions from A blob and G blob. And as you can see, genomic blob uh, was even better than the traditional genetic evaluation. So the accuracy was 0.71 versus 0.6. And then in the second scenario, we got even you know, better uh, uh, accuracies from genomic blob because you are using more data or the training population size is larger. 
So this scatter plot shows the correlations between predictions from A blob and genomic blob. Uh, in that scenario, we you know we did not remove any phenotype from individuals. So just you know using the genomic relationship matrix instead of pedigrees to see what kind of correlation we get. So it's almost perfect correlation. Now this slide is important and that's my last slide. So when you remove phenotype of subset of the individuals, if you use the traditional um, blob and pedigrees, what you see here is that, you know, circled by red, those individuals are six. They come from the same cross. So they don't have phenotypic data. The prediction will be the, exactly the same for all of them. That would be meet parent breeding values. So you cannot make selections in the cross. But when you use markers or genomic blood, which is shown in the x-axis, you see segregation. They have different breeding values. You know, they range from maybe 1 to 4, maybe 4.5. So markers allows capturing Mendelian segregation effect. And that's a very powerful uh, tool to use in animal and plant breeding. So other advantages of genomic blood, uh, especially for plant breeders, uh, you can include um, experimental design factors in your mixed model, like you know environment uh, replication effect. And it's very easy to run uh, with various software. Um, some acknowledgments, uh, you know, those slides and material I have been using uh, are taken from a textbook um, and some publications. Uh, the textbook is being developed by Chris Malteka, Jim Holland, Ross Wilton, and myself. And uh, of course, we got a lot of help from uh, our students, Jaime Zapata, Kunda Oud, and I have to acknowledge N State University Tree Improvement Program. Uh, with that, um, I'll be glad to take questions. <laughs>